In today's video, I want to share some information about Solar 12K inverter I have been using for two years and I want to give you a quick update about how it performs if I would buy it again and compare it to a cheaper inverter that can be used on off-grid application. Two years ago when I was shopping for equipment, there was not too many choices on the market. After I did research and checked out inverters that was recommended highly by other users, warranty, etc. etc. I contacted a major distributor, Alt E Store, told them I want to run a 2600 square feet house on green energy and as they advised as well. I ended up buying the Solar 12K outdoor rated inverter. This was probably the only inverter according to the spec sheet rated for max continuous inverter power 9000 watt. Mostly all other ones were around 6000. Once the house was ready and I installed the equipment, on the first day the solar shut down due to an AC overload. I was thinking maybe I left one of the large load on like an oven, dryer or a water heater. In a few days later, solar shut down due to the same fault again. I started checking all my appliances with the clamp meter thinking that just because they are new, maybe one of them have issues. I also contacted Alt e Store if they can help me to figure this problem out. I contacted Solark as well. We updated the firmware, but this unit just constantly was shutting down and uh, nobody said anything. Here is the screenshot of the code F34 AC overload fault, and the manual says please reduce heavy loads. One weekend, I turned off all my loads and I started testing to see where is the point where the inverter shuts off. I also moved certain loads in the main panel to make sure when I turn the loads on one by one, I'm not going to be over at 9000 watts. First, I turned on a large size load and followed by the medium ones until the inverter did shut down. With my other test, I didn't use any large loads, just middle loads like a hair dryer, mixer, toaster, and solar did shut down many times when it was not even close to the inverter max continuous power. Doing these tests multiple times a day, I was pulling my hair out at one point by trying to create situations with different loads to find out how am I overloading this inverter. I found it out this inverter is not a 9000 watt, rather a 8000 watt inverter and actually shuts off many times at between 7600 to 7800 watts. After a while, I realized that the problem was not that I overloaded the inverter. When L1 and L2 are not in balance and the difference is somewhere at 900 or 2000 watts, this unit just can't handle the loads. So it would have been much easier to figure this issue out if it had been throwing the code F26 bus unbalanced fault not F34 AC overload fault. But it was not the case. So I contacted Solar, told them my problem and asked them if they have a different or a larger unit to for exchange because I can't use this one for my needs. But they didn't have anything and I was not able to return it either. The only way I was able to make it work that Solar was connected separately to a panel with 240 volt loads only. I knew that the two large loads not going to work with it, but it was easier to manage the problem since there was only six major loads on that circuit. Meanwhile, I purchased this Grovat 12K inverter to supply all my other loads on the main panel. This comes with a transformer, so I think it's close to 160 pounds. This unit is absolutely amazing. 
and it didn't give me any headaches the last two years. I didn't have to watch what I turn on or off, it's just doing whatever it's designed for. I know many people think you should always compare Apple to Apple and I should not compare Solark to Grovan because one of them has a transformer built in, the other one is transformless. But if you live off grid this doesn't matter, I work for the money and I have to deal with the problem. All these large companies with reputation should spend more time to test the items before available for purchase and all these units should have a recall like cars and fix these issues to keep everybody happy and not wasting anybody's money. Solar cost $7,000 rated for 7600 continuous watt according to my testing. Comes with 10 year warranty. I've been using it for the last 2 years. Many features are great. I like the touch screen. The software is very nice. It is light, very quiet and you don't need a PV combiner box, but absolutely not worth the price for my off-grid application. You have to decide what is good for you, I just tell you my own experience. Growat did cost $2500 rated for 12k. It runs much louder, not as efficient but no issues the last two years whatsoever. I already passed the time period and seems to be working just like brand new. Living off grid, running everything on electric, I have to tell you setups like three 6000 watt inverters should not be considered for many reasons. You need three, four, six kilowatt units that takes up too much room on the wall. Copper is expensive, so the wires. Connecting multiple units costs almost as much than buying a larger inverter. If you have to hire someone to install this for you, that will be more expensive as well. It seems many people these days thinking about living off-grid and these major companies should be considering manufacturing larger inverters for off-grid applications like Grover for cheaper price. I just wanted to share these thoughts with you, sometimes buying more expensive item just because looks good on the paper, that is not really true all the time. I hope this information helped you to make the right decision. Right now, I am testing another new inverter in the background and I will let you know more about it in the next video. I think I covered everything I wanted and I want to say thank you to everyone who is watching my channel. Please subscribe if you haven't done it so. Have a great day and see you in the next one.